Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, my name's Rachel and I'm a huge Eurovision fan as well as a musician. And in today's video, I'm going to be listening to, for the first time, to Croatia's entry for this year's upcoming Eurovision Song Contest. I'm really excited to see what happens and we just got to get this thing out the way firstly. I'm still not over Alvina non-qualifying. I think it was an absolute travesty that she didn't go through considering she actually scored in the top 10 of both the televote and the jury vote, but somehow still didn't qualify. It's still to this day makes me annoyed so I'm hoping Croatia has brought something good to the table this year to ensure that they qualify because I think in order for them to qualify they've got to send something really original really strong and something that makes them stand out something that gives them a real identity so let's see what's happened this year because they have selected Mia Dimsic who won the national final and the song is called Guilty Pleasure so let's get into this. Stay tuned to the end of the video where I will be giving this song a score out of 10 and consider subscribing if you haven't already. I make lots of similar videos to this. So without further ado, let's get straight into this. Dreamt of you last night, woke up, you weren't there. Five nights in a row of dreams I'd never shared. Without a warning, early in the morning, timing's never been a thing. Leaving me with guilt, the only souvenir you bring. I'm with him, and you're a secret treasure. Mm. He's a boss, and you're a guilty pleasure. I'm with him, and this is real life, honey. Guess the joke's no longer funny. I'm with him until the death do us. Oh, bloody hell. But it doesn't <laughs> So let's just set something out the way firstly, because I'm sure every single person that's listened to this immediately thought this. Yeah, it sounds like a Taylor Swift song. That's the first thing I thought of. The way it's being performed vocally, as in the melody, the way it's been written, the guitar, the instrumentation, everything about it is very Taylor Swift. Apart from the sound of the vocal, it's actually quite Carly Rae Jepsen. So it's a bit of a combination of those two things. But let's put those to the side because I don't want to focus on things like that because I want Mia to have her own style and I want to review her song because as if it's her own thing, it's her as an artist. So let's forget about the Taylor Swift stuff for now. Something I really like so far is the laid back quality of this. Guitar, a nice uh, violin string section as well in there, although it sounded like it was being played on a keyboard and not actually real strings. So I think I would have preferred to hear a real instrument, but I still like the combination of the guitar and the violin cello keyboard thing. So that works. And the melody, like I said about with Taylor Swift, is Taylor Swift knows how to write strong melody lines. And this is giving me that. It's a strong melody line and it's got a nice drum beat as well. Very inoffensive. It's, yeah, quite charming, I think. Is it so far doing anything outstandingly new or special? I don't, I wouldn't write it off just yet, but it's not to me experimental. Um, but I like the dance on stage. I think that's quite a nice touch. And I think she's got a good relationship with the camera. She knows how to perform it, especially she's engaging the audience because with quite a laid back song like this, you've got to know how to engage your audience. And I think she is doing that. And I like her outfit and I like the, the aesthetic overall. So let's keep going. Let's see how it develops. Love is enough, that's all you ever get. At least that's what they tell you. Did you hear how the drum beat there was in the exact same rhythm as the vocal? It was like, da, 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 da. Like, I like that touch. That was a nice touch because it really capitulates the melody line. 
I think that's what they're trying to get to stand out the most here. I'm kind of feeling that the dancer is distracting me a little bit in the performance, to be honest. I think when it comes to Turin, they need to rethink the staging because the focus really has to be on the singer and not the dancer. It's the Eurovision Song Contest, not the Eurovision Dance Contest. But something else I really like about this is the chords. The chord progression is quite nice because they're using a movement where they move to chord five, chord five major and then chord five minor immediately after that. So it takes the tone of it, the mood of it to a different place. It's got a diff it's got a very Taylor Swift-esque musical soundscape because it's using these particular chords to create a nice atmosphere and to I think play with the emotions of the song as well it doesn't seem like this song is supposed to be a happy song or a sad song it's somewhere in between I mean I know th I know that those are extremely high level terms <laughs> but um that's the best I can do to explain so let's see exactly what happens next Nice backing vocals. nice ending there so okay a couple of positive things i like about that this is double-edged sword okay the backing track is really nice in its sparseness you've got just a light drum no real snare in there it's just a little click noise as well um which really makes it quite laid back you've got a pizzicato string so they're plucking the violins as well to create this bouncy effect keep it nice and light as well that's the kind of tone of this is very light and a nice piano played at the very high range so the high notes are right at the um, far right end of the piano they'll be like making a tinkly noise there which is also quite nice and then a really light bass but at the same time when you've got things like that it loses a bit of power and I think what's missing from this is power so in order to fix that, they have to really turn the volume up on a lot of those instruments. And the backing vocals they were using were a nice touch, but they needed to be louder and thicker. It felt like there was maybe three parts and I would make that a five part harmony instead or a six part harmony to really boost it out. And once you've got those things there, you've got actually a really strong entry. So I think there's a lot of potential here. There's a couple of things I would change, obviously, like I said. But I like the chorus, I like the melody of it. It's very simple, but very sweet and light. And I like that because it's quite just charming, really. And it's done its best to be charming. And I think that's always a good thing at Eurovision. So those are my thoughts. I think in terms of a score out of 10, with the provision that they could hopefully change the staging because at the moment it's a bit bare and it really needs to have a bit more power. So I'm gonna give it a six and a half out of 10 for now, but it could get higher later on if I see that they start making a few changes. So those are my thoughts, but let me know in the comments down below what you guys think as well. And stay tuned for more content and I'll see you soon for more reactions. Bye.